have family join us for a meal. When they do, one of their favourites is food from the Eastern Mediterranean. And so tonight, we're having Greek dishes and Lebanese dishes. So, come with me, I'll walk you through the menu. From Greece, we have Dolmades and Greek-inspired spinach rolls, both of which are served with Greek tzatziki. Now, from Lebanon, we have koftas, falafel, hummus, and tabbouleh. And of course, lots of Lebanese bread. Would you like to hear how these dishes are made? I have put all the recipes at the end of this video for you, but I will show you the ingredients and comment on each dish. First, the koftas. Get your mixing bowl and put in the nice lean minced lamb meat and finely chopped herbs. I'm using parsley and mint, but you may also like to add some fresh coriander. Now grate the onion. Trim the stalk end and score around the root end with a sharp knife. Remove the skin and you can hold the root end in the palm of your hand as you grate the flesh. Finally grate or crush the garlic, break in the egg and season with salt and pepper. Mix it well with your fingers and sprinkle the cumin and chilli powder over the top. Now mix in about half the breadcrumbs. Keep mixing and continue adding more breadcrumbs until you have the right consistency to form the sausage shaped koftas. Press the mixture down into the bowl, cover and refrigerate for two to three hours or overnight for the flavours to mature. Shape the koftas on skewers if you're cooking them on a barbecue, but if you're cooking them in a grill pan or an oven, the skewers are really unnecessary. Now the hummus. Hummus is based on chickpeas. Look at these lovely chickpeas. If you want lovely hummus, you have to start with lovely chickpeas. Go to a good Lebanese or Indian shop and find some plump looking dried chickpeas. Soak them in water overnight. Discard the soaking water and cook in fresh water until soft enough to crush between your finger and thumb. As a last resort, you could use the canned variety. Make the hummus whilst the chickpeas are still quite warm for the best texture. Everything, the chickpeas, tahini, garlic, cumin, lemon juice, salt and pepper, plus the chilli powder if you wish, and a generous dash of olive oil simply goes into the food processor to be mixed into a thick cream. If it is too thick, add a little warm water. Hummus is best made the day before it is eaten and stored in the refrigerator so as to mature the flavours. Serve it drizzled with olive oil and dusted with paprika. Falafel are also based on chickpeas, preferably fresh cooked, as for the hummus. I also use some burgoo and some stale lavash, the Lebanese bread. They are spiced with grated onion, garlic, ground cumin, finely chopped fresh coriander, and the juice of half a lemon, plus salt and pepper to taste. Mix everything together in the food processor, except the burgoo and the fresh coriander, which should not be pulverized. Here we have our burgoo. It's been soaked for 20 to 30 minutes in hot water. Squeezed very dry using muslin, or you could use a tea towel. And now we'll add the falafel mix and the chocolate coriander. Mix everything through our, with our fingers. Right. All ready? We just take enough of the final mix to make a, a little ball, perhaps the size of all of Hold on. It's a lot of fun. Now, we rest these little fellows overnight in the refrigerator with a little sheet of baking paper over the top. 
We're ready to cook our falafel now. Oil has to be heated to around 180, 190. Uh, but you don't really need a thermometer. If you have a wooden handle um, device like this or a wooden spoon, just put the wooden handle in with oil. If you see a fine trickle of bubbles coming up, it's okay. I'll cook with it five or six at a time. If you overcrowd the pan, then you reduce the temperature of the oil a great deal when they go in and they don't cook properly. What I like to do is to put them on this scoop and submerge them. If you throw them in and get a splash of boiling oil on your hand, it's not very pleasant. The tabbouleh recipe is really quite straightforward, but do be sure to chop all the ingredients very finely. My Greek spinach rolls are filled with a mixture similar to that used in the Greek dish, spanakopita. You may use spinach or silver beet or some of each as the basis, but if you use silver beet, be sure to cut the white midrib out of each leaf. The wet washed leaves are placed in a large pot with about a quarter of a cup of water, covered and steamed over high heat until wilted. When they're cool, squeeze out the excess water and chop them coarsely. Grate the onion and garlic as we did for the coptas. Add to the mixing bowl, along with the lemon juice, egg, cumin, breadcrumbs, and a generous dash of olive oil. Crumble the feta over the top. I like to use Bulgarian or Greek feta, that's the best, and mix it well. The mix should be quite moist. If it doesn't stick to your fingers, add, perhaps add another egg or half an egg. Press it down in the bowl and leave for half an hour while you prepare the pastry. I use frozen puff pastry and you will need three sheets for the quantities in the recipe. When the sheets are partially thawed, cut across the middle of each with the tip of the table bar, take care not to cut the plastic film underneath, and lightly brush with a little water the edge of each sheet farthest away from you. Now, take a handful of the spinach mix and arrange it along the edge nearest you. Bring the edge of the pastry sheet over the mix, Roll over the moistened edge to form a long sausage. Carefully lift the sausage and place it with the overlapping edges underneath on a baking pan lined with baking paper. I'll need about 30 or 40 minutes in an oven at 180 degrees if it's fan forced, a bit longer otherwise, but will improve their appearance if you remove them when they begin to show some colour and liberally brush with egg wash before continuing the cooking. When they're cold enough to touch, just cut each sausage into four pieces. You should always have some tzatziki. If it's possible at all, you should use the best pot set natural Greek yogurt to make your tzatziki. You just crush or grate the garlic finely into it, along with a pinch of salt and mix it well. Maybe you might like to add some finely chopped mint. Put the yogurt to one side while you prepare the cucumber. Cut the cucumber into quarters lengthwise and you'll then be able to remove most of the seeds with one cut on each. Those that are left don't matter. Now cut each piece into strips lengthwise. You can easily then chop them very, very fine. Spread out onto three or four thicknesses of paper towel. Sprinkle well with salt. Cover with two or more paper towels pressed down lightly and leave it for about an hour to dewater. Then you simply mix the cucumber pieces into the seasoned yogurt and you're done. I do not have the patience to make dolmides, but I buy them in cans in the supermarket and uh, uh, they're quite nice. Well, now you have a nice plate full of food. Let's go into the dining room. Leanne has prepared a nice table centre to go with our food. Let's go and see. A table centre for a Middle Eastern meal to not only be aesthetically pleasing but also functional with appropriate fruit to serve after the meal. Here on a large round tray, colourful bottles are the focal point. A colourful pomegranate is halved, grapes have been washed and dried and the dates group figs also. Some figs are cut in half for extra appeal. 
and a few blood oranges are cut decoratively. You may also like to add dried apricots, nuts or baklava to serve with coffee after the meal. Okay. Candles always give the finishing touch to add the extra ambience. These candles are floating in water and positioned on upturned wine glasses which highlight the grapes.